There's a creature with the ability to time travel, and that only means one thing. Look, Creatures of Scenario has evolved so much since we first played it, it's even getting a TV show! Like, what?! And after some quick research, I figured out that the creators of the game release lore. All of a sudden, every update, creature and mechanic is connected to that lore. But the question is, where does it all start? Well, before the universe existed, life was given to seven wardens. Qualul, Omnibus, Varhaus, Morsfuk, Zotek. Yuxa and the Senatol of Balance. When these seven wardens came together, they created what we call the universe. Here every warden was assigned their own planet, but more importantly, in the middle of the universe the orb existed. There's rumors that there's lore hidden here, so I'm gonna survive through each version. What could possibly go wrong? This is Dragonaria, also known as the first version of COS. Now let's get to the best part of the game, picking a creature. Our choices will be between Wyvern and Jeff? Yeah. My plan from here was to find some lore, so I flew through areas like Thundra, some sort of canyon, a witch forest, and then I thought it would be cool to go through this cave. So nothing too special happened, until it got dark. Yo wait, what has happened? Are you munching my bed? What are you doing? Yeah, I had to run away from an onion looking creature that unbeknownst to me was a huge part of the lore. It turns out they're life seed. This is the beginning of every creature in the game. Let me explain. The evolution of a creature begins at the life seed, but they will stay like this unless a warren comes to help them out. When a warden does decide to help, they have the ability to evolve into another creature. But that raised the following question. Why haven't they evolved into a stronger version in Dragonaria? Plants. So for them to be able to evolve, the warrens had to reshape the entire world. But this meant the end of Dragonaria. But the beginning of a reshaped orb that now is called Creatures of Gagartha. Now that we have more creatures, we have more lore. Lots of it is hidden in the behaviors of the creatures that got introduced into the orb. So I chose a land, sea and sky creature to figure out what we can learn. And I'm proud to introduce to you, Harry, a poisonous land creature. Bob, just a bird. And Henry, our lookalike glow stick. There wasn't that much interesting stuff in the beginning, except for this blue wall that Harry seemed to struggle with quite a bit. But whilst Henry was minding his own business, Harry did find a way to overcome this obstacle, at least. Kind of? It leads to more lore, that's all that matters, okay? I found more lore exactly at this moment. See, the creatures that are currently on the map are here for one reason. A environmental test. That's why you will see creatures like Harry fight off these lissies, Henry fight off sharks, and Bob holding on to this fish for dear life. Only if they survive multiple climates and various challenges in the orb, they will be considered a prospective species. Which means that they're likely to stay for the future. Apexes, omnivores, and creatures with high survivability usually have the highest chance. And after many months, dozens of hours, and lots of challenges later, Harry, Bob, and Henry finally accomplished this. And with that, the future of their species is secured. And right on time too. Between October and December, Creatures of Agartha was changed to Creatures of Sonaria. Nothing much changed, except for new creatures being added, Jeff's special ability, and of course, more lore. This we can split up in four categories, but for now, let's focus on some creatures. If you look here, here, and here, you might have noticed that there's a lot more prospective species in the game right now. They're actually made on warden governed planets. Those kind of look like this. So in a nutshell, life seeds are transformed into creatures on water and governed planets. Then they're introduced into the orb, where they will have to do environmental tests to become a prospective species. And that leaves three more things to discuss. But for now, let's focus on the world. So here's my top 5 favorite things about the lore in it. Have you ever seen volcanic eruptions, tornadoes, or even gravitation? This is not just an in-game event, it has deep lore behind it. If you've watched the entire video, you know that the wardens shape the world. Sometimes the wardens can't decide who takes what area and how it should be shaped. So they fight to come to a conclusion. These fights actually cause natural disasters. 2. We've had many changes to the orb, but I'd say there are 5 major ones. Dragonaria. This first version of the orb literally just got created from nothing. Number 2 is Creatures of Agartha. This is the first major change to the orb. Another very interesting one is the opening of Creatures of Sonaria. This was a major change again. And somewhere on between this, there was a massive map change again. This is the map that we know and love today. But I'm sad to announce, we're gonna have to let it go. But we're getting a new map and it's actually insane. I love the way 
way this looks. Now we all know there are five massive changes to the world, but if we look at the world from a smaller perspective, there's an actual story going on here. Like have you ever noticed these skeletons on the map? They are way bigger than the current creature sizes that we have, and yet none have survived. This is because they are non-prospective species. So there was a time where creatures were much bigger, we just don't know when that was. Yet. Well, let's zoom out again. We're gonna have a wider point of view. As we all know, this is the current orb. And if we move thousands of light years away, we will see some warden planets. But if we were to zoom out, you would see this. Yeah, wardens have entire galaxies, not just singular planets. Since we're talking about the wardens anyway, they do create something else. We're talking about plants here. We're not exactly sure what warden created which, however if we had to go off the locations of their statues, Garab would have made Volcanic, the Verdant Warden has made the Flower Cove, which is quite logical considering the colors, Hellion has made Dunes, Boreal has made Thundra, Nova's made the Sea, Ardor has made Swamp. Now I don't know how love and swamps connect, but you know, fine? That's enough facts for now. Let's finish what we began in the intro, shall we? Oh, in case you don't remember... Here's a refresher. The Wardens were born in the beginning of time, right? They came together and took New Year's to a whole new level, which caused the universe to be born. I don't know how, I just know it happened. Anyways, in this universe, the orb exists, and we all know it as Dragon Area. And if we take a closer look, we can spot these little guys called Lifesea. One of these got some help from the Wardens and eventually became the first prospective species. We know them as Wyvern and Jeff, but we know what they really are. Fast forward 4 months, and the orb got changed to Creatures of Agartha. This version brought many new prospective creatures but something was missing. To figure out what was missing, they opened up the game for testing. This was exactly one month later. It lasted for a few days, but once it was finished, lots of changes were made. More creatures, mechanics, a new map, a new name, but one thing stood out in particular. The new events. Here I have an entire list of every event that ever happened. Now what if I told you that there's untold lore in these? But why do they stand out? Well, in each of these events, wardens were able to roam the earth. This was possible because of reincarnation, but this had some drawbacks. See, their power was trivial to the original, meaning that their power isn't even remotely close to their god form. But why would they do this then? Well, it's said that reincarnation serve as the eyes and ears of the wardens. So the wardens basically take turns to do this depending on which event. The Boreal Warden does this with Winter, the Ardor Warden with Valentines, Verdant Warden with Easter, Hellion Warden with Time, Garrow Warden with Halloween, and Novus for LSS. But unbeknownst to the wardens, there was a huge error in the 2022 Easter event. See, you had to defeat this Easter boss in the event itself, which dropped really good rewards. Yeah, this broke the economy with its craziness. This is where the LSS event came in. It forced you to donate lots of mush if you wanted the following creatures. So this kind of fixed the economy? But the player count was dropping. That is until they released this a few months after. Yes, we're getting a recode for the first time in history. And oh boy, am I excited. From what I'm seeing, there is a lot more mechanics, a new map, and I think there might be be more lore. But for now, this is all I could figure out. So consider subscribing. See ya!